What is up, world? I am Dave LaFave. This is Primetime Carolina. Today with me, I have the incomparable Paul Mills, Panthers fan legend. What's up, Paul? How you doing, man? I'm here, man. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, man. I'm living that year number 51, Sam Mills of my lifetime. Never thought I'd make it this far, but yet here I am. Uh, year, what, 27, 28, whatever we are now, of Panther fandom. I've been here <laughs> through the ups and downs, and I'm here to talk about Panthers. Man. Let's talk about some football. I love it. I love it. The Sam Mills year. Perfect. That's right. Yeah, that's right. All right. So, speaking of our – Beloved Carolina Panthers that are very easy to hate. They're coming off a 19 to 16 loss to the New York Giants. The more things change, the more they seem to stay the same with our Panthers. Um, at the end of the day, they just couldn't get it done in this one. Um, the things that jumped out to me in this game were the offense's inability to be effective on early downs and the defense's inability to get off the field on third downs and to step up in key situations. Uh, what did you see from the team, Paul, that caught your eye in this one? Well, again, uh, slow start. It seems like uh, that's a theme for uh, just about all the games that I've watched the last couple of years um, with the Panthers. Oh, actually, no, not, that's not true. Uh, this year, definitely. Um, slow start, uh, I saw a couple uh, – no pressure. We were putting no pressure on the quarterback, seemed like, for a while. And, and um, you know, our offensive line wasn't holding up too well for a while there. It seemed like we were holding um, uh, um, Barkley in check for a, a good bit of the time. I don't know what his overall stats were. I was not sure about that. Uh, but it seemed like we were holding him in check, man. And, and then, you know, for the most part, that's where I felt. Slow start, you know, always. It seems like what, what the case is always less. This year, anyway. What about you? You think that's going on with them? You think that's a problem, or yeah, just... I, you know, it's hard to 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 tiptoe around it because at this point, in just about any um, Panthers fan circle you find yourself in, the topic of conversation is Matt Rule, and uh, you know whether or not it's time to move on. Most Panthers fans seem to agree that it, this just ain't working. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I think uh, everybody who was watching the game or was on the TV at least saw that stat, one in 26, I think it is. Um, one in 26 now, is that right? When uh, the opponent scores 17 points or more. Uh, that's not a lot of points in the NFL, man. And, and, right. Uh, that doesn't look good, you know. Um, that stat alone uh, makes it hard to – kind of root for the guy anymore um you know like when he first got hired I was all for it he was kind of rah rah I think I told you I would play for him if I was able you know and hmm. but I think that only works for so long with these guys you know these guys are out of college and they, they you know they, they get paid lots of money they don't really want somebody cheering them up um, they want somebody to coach them up and tell them what to do correctly and treat them like a professional I guess but I don't know man it's just tough to kind of gauge where this team is with him I'm uh, kind of done with it <laughs> at this point. I'm hoping that we'll get a look at some other hot um, assistants uh, coming up because I think that's the route to go. It seems like people have the most success these days with hot assistants. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't want to spend too much time on this because I feel like this is going to be the topic of conversation for weeks to come, uh, yeah. un unfortunately. But, you know, I, I tend to agree with you as well. You can't play in the NFL in the year 2022 – and expect your defense to hold these offenses to 16 points a game, and that's going to be a recipe for success because that's just not going to fly. I mean, yeah. you look at some of these offenses, you know, these modern teams that are out there, these – especially in the, you know, upper echelon of the league, I mean, there's just no way the Panthers can even compete with that right now. And it's a shame because there's been so much draft capital put into this defense – uh, there's a lot of talented players on this defense. There's no doubt about that. And even to me, you know, obviously the defense is the, uh, I guess, the stronger of the of the three units for the team, or it should be on paper. And to me, they're just really not that good. I mean, 
They did bounce back holding Saquon Barkley this game. I'll give them that, which honestly I didn't really expect them to as bad as week one was against the Browns. They did bounce back pretty well against Saquon Barkley, but even that wasn't enough. <clears throat> and that kind of brings me back to one of those first points I made. No matter how well they play statistically, at the end of the day, if you're letting Daniel Jones scramble for a first down on third and nine with the game on the line, you're not a good defense. That's not something good defenses let happen. And the Panthers do it game in and game out. Every day, every time, every time. Daniel Jones looking like Steve Young. I mean, <laughs> it, it's crazy, man. Uh, just I, I couldn't believe it. I think he bowled over somebody at one point uh, and during the game. Um, defense, uh, you, you know, I was saying a slow start. The defense had, had, the, had to, you know, defend the goal. Within, you know, what, 20 yards? They were within the 20 two times in the first five minutes of the game, and the defense held them to two field goals. And, I mean, they just can't do that all day. They are, they're not a terrible defense. They're just not that good. Like you said, they're just not that good. They're thin in the middle. I mean, linebackers are thin. Um, um, you know, Jeremy Chin is playing linebacker or safety or corner or defensive line or, I don't know, whatever it is. You know, it's just uh, it, it knows no consistency there, no pressure on the quarterback, and it's just tough to watch, man. It's tough to watch there. Yeah, and I don't try to act like I'm somebody who completely, you know, understands everything when it comes to X's and O's. I'm with you. I don't I, either. I feel like I, you know, tend to know what I'm looking at most of the time, but I'm not going to sit here and act like I know more than NFL coaches. But at the same time, when you watch the Panthers play, especially in these crucial situations, the defense just seems out of place. And if that's not coaching, I don't know what what it what else it could possibly be. Yeah. Um, you go back on both of these games, you go back to the Browns game especially, the number of times the Panthers couldn't get off the field on third and long, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it felt like it was every time. And I had counted it or I had, uh, you know, tracked it out at one point when we were in about the third quarter, I think when the score was 20 to seven um, in every Browns possession could be traced back to a third and long conversion. Yeah. And that's one of the keys in the NFL, man. If you're not a good third down defense, you're not a good defense. That's just the way I see it. And I don't really care what any other stats say. No, no, you're right. I mean, JC Horn is, is a, is a, is a highlight for us. I think, you know, I mean, they, they don't throw at him. So, um, I guess that's good. Uh, D Dante Jackson seemed like he was playing pretty good th this past game, not as bad as the, the first game. Or was it C.J. Henderson or Underwood kept getting burned in the last – against the Browns? This Giants game, um, I'm trying to recall really the, the defensive backs, where they played. I don't remember really that well. But the defense just didn't, didn't do it, didn't get it done. And when they, we needed to, they drove at the end, uh, got the field goal. It's just I, I've told several people I don't have to watch the end of these games anymore because I've seen this movie before. I know how to end. Right. Absolutely. Exactly well, that and that just goes back to you know what we were talking about before. If you're you know one in twenty four, is that what you said it was? I know it's something. I can't like remember that. if it was one in twenty five. I think they said it was one in twenty four or the one in twenty five during the game. So yeah, and then he lost. So we're either one in twenty five or one in twenty six against. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and and then I saw another one that said out of the 25 losses uh, in the Matt Rule era, 16 of them have been by one possession. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think we're at, what, nine, either nine or ten in a row now. I mean, what we're doing is just not working. It's just not yeah. working. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, I think when Matt Rule first came into the league, um, you know, I don't know if it was because it was a new coach and the, the team was rallying around him a little bit, or, you know, I don't know if it was some of these college concepts were uh, just a, something a little bit different for a lot of these, you know, NFL um, coordinators on the opposing side. So maybe there, it took some time for them to adjust because whenever this whole thing started, it felt like it was going to work out. It felt like it, they were going to build something, something good. Yeah, you're not, you're good. It felt like they were going to build, you know, build towards something. Uh, and then we had obviously the three and zero start last year, 
And it was like, oh man, this is the culmination of everything coming together. It's finally, you know, it's all working out for us. And then ever since that point, it has it has just absolutely fallen apart. And you look at um, another thing that blew my mind, which I didn't realize um, until this weekend, is we have not won a game since uh, Cam Newton's return against the Cardinals. That was the last game the Panthers won, which oh, seems right. absolutely impossible. But it's been that long since we won a game. Wow. So uh, it's hard to believe that. It's very hard to believe that. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, that just blowing me away. I can't believe that. I mean, that absolutely feels like a lifetime ago. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, wow. What week was that? I don't even know. So that's how long it's been. You know, it, it gets old every weekend. Um, you know, watching, the team lose or in a different variety of ways. Uh, like you said, again, we're going to, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I'm just kind of ready for a change, uh, waiting it out. You know, on one hand, uh, we lose. Um, you know, there's another chance for us to have a new coach at the end of the year or in the, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so. Yeah, with the way the schedule looks uh, coming up with, uh, you know, the Saints, 49ers, and I don't remember after that, but I know the schedule is just rough for the Panthers. I don't think there's any way we reach uh, – I think the Falcons are like week eight or whatever. I don't see any way we get there with even two wins. I don't see us being better than two and six uh, when we get near the halfway point of the season. So, honestly, at this point, it's just a matter of time till Matt Rules, you know, handed his walking papers. Yeah, I mean – uh, I don't even know who we – I think we have the Cardinals. Uh, who else do we have to play? You got a screen you can pull it up there. I mean, that's there's a bunch of uh, games that I don't think we're going to be favored to win. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of who we, we play that's – Yeah, they're right here. Let's see. The outside Saints, the Cardinals, win. 49ers, Rams, Bucks are the next five yeah. games. None of those are, are, are winnable for us, even the Cardinals. I mean, the Cardinals, look, I was I was like, maybe the Cardinals. And then yet the other day, they, you know, I mean, um, Kyler Murray running around like Steve Young, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, um, I'm worried about that. So, uh, I don't know. Who else do you say after the cards? Um, So, Saints, Cards, 49ers, Rams, Buccaneers, and then the Falcons, the blackout game on Thursday night. Yeah, I'll be at that game. That'll be fun to watch. Uh, or we'll I'm sorry, out. no, that's not the blackout game. Oh, that's at Atlanta. the blackout game's two weeks later. But between yeah. the two Falcons games is the Bengals. Yeah, there's there's another L. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> things aren't things aren't looking great. I mean, I'll, you know, like I said, it's really only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. But um, what you know, let's talk about some other things. Um, Andre Roberts is out now. Is that right? So. Yeah, and I uh, believe he's on IR, right? Yeah, he's on IR. So uh, that worries me because that means probably Chuba Hubbard is going to be returning kicks again. Um, I, I think he did okay after that that fumble. Did he? Did he continue to kick return after that? I know he. I remember seeing him kick return at least once after that. I don't remember. Yeah, I only remember him having one other return after that, and I believe he almost fumbled that one as well. <laughs> after oh, did end. he? Oh, yeah. yeah, I think he was down. Uh, on the play. I mean, if I recall correctly, I believe that was him, but yeah, man, Chuba, Chuba's, I I've, I've been a, a long time non Chuba fan. Yeah, uh, that's so. another Matt rule pick. I mean, you yeah. know, I remember his wife said, pick, pick Chuba Hubbard, pick Chuba right. Hubbard. You your wife. I'm sorry. I'll stop now. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I'm with you. I, I, at Chuba, at first I was like, "Hey, this guy looks like he could be pretty good." But then I was like, "Well, why don't I remember ever hearing anything about Chuba Hubbard?" I remember that, but uh, the the uh, thing about Chuba Hubbard is, even early on to me, I just felt like I was looking at a running back three. You know what I mean? I just felt like yeah. this guy's yeah, he's an NFL player, but he's not better than a backup. Right. And it felt like we were, it almost felt like we were insistent on trying to get him in the lineup. And, you know, ultimately he was able to put together some decent games with some decent stats, but I never felt like I was looking at a guy who was going to be even a starting quality running back. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I think over time he's just shown that he's really not – he's maybe not even a backup. I mean, he – you know, we all know he can't catch a cold. Um, yeah. He's fumbling on kickoffs. He gets to the line of scrimmage. He looks like he's on roller skates. He can't decide which way he wants it to go unless there's a wide open hole for him to go through. Now, I'll give him this. He has great acceleration. You yeah. know, I yeah. give him that. That's basically, you know, the only tool in his tool bag is his, his ability to get up to top speed and go. Um, but other than that, man, I have have not been impressed with Chuba Hubbard. Yeah, and I feel you. like that's something most fans are starting to uh, agree with me on. But not long ago, I was in the minority in that in that uh, I can't call it a Chuba fan club, Chuba Chuba non fan <laughs> club. Right, right. Yeah. Chuba hater club. <laughs> you know, I was trying not to say that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I guess that's the only way to really describe it. I don't know. Um. So. Uh, receivers you know the guy we signed or the guy we traded for from uh jacksonville what's his name you know something yeah lavisca chenault yeah chenault um levinsky and he uh anyway he um hasn't played there's been an inactive for both games um yeah. i guess doesn't know the playbook as well as ben uh, mcadoo thought he was going to know the playbook apparently they were together together in jacksonville there so right um we're I, hoping to see, see him. And, and Rashard Higgins has not played either, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? No. he. I I think Higgins has zero snaps. And yeah. I think Terrace Marshall has like three or four. And yeah. they were all like running plays or something like that. So ne- neither one of those guys has had an opportunity. Which is funny because our boy Matt Rule – uh, on Sunday after the game was asked about that. And then they said, and he said, uh, well, we don't need to change anything. We just need to keep doing what we're doing better. And then the next day he tells everybody, yeah, we need to get these other receivers involved. It's like, bro, you're the head coach. If anyone can get these receivers involved, it's you tell them to <laughs> tell them to get in the game. It's almost like he's just repeating what other people are telling them. You know? it, uh, and um, it's like, and he, it, it's not a new thing for him either. If you go back, uh, it's, you know, far as the beginning of last year, he's talked about um, how we need to have a commitment to the running game. And we still haven't seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I think last week against the Browns, someone asked him about that again, about, uh, you know, I don't know if it was McCaffrey only having 10 carries or what, but his response was something like, well, the best teams in the league pass the ball, can pass the ball. It's like, you need to pick a philosophy, my man, because <laughs> it, and it just seems like that's just how it goes with him over and over again. It's just like circles, uh, just him talking in circles and never, you know, actually doing anything. It's getting painful. Yeah, but, it's, it's, it's hard to watch, man. Telling my friend at the gym this morning, it's hard to watch. It's he's a Packers fan, and he had a hard week, week one. But his wife is a Vikings fan, and they he had a good week too after that. But oh, yeah. he, uh, you know, I was telling him, he, you know, he was a big fan of Baker's before the season. I was too. I still am. I don't really hate Baker. I'm not going to say um, that. I just don't. I, I don't think he's had a lot of time to do what he's. And and also, he needs to get out of the pocket apparently because he cannot throw over the arms of the defense. They know. They're watching, man. They're, you can see when the re, uh, replay of, this, of each play, when they show that, the guys are just watching him. They're just waiting and watching him when he, when he cocks, they just put their arms up. Um, and I, I think when I was at the Browns game, uh, the guy behind me was a Browns fan because, goodness, they were all over the place. Um, that's, that's, another, that's another thing that's pretty sad, man. It's just, it's just sad. <laughs> A lot of Browns fans at that game. A lot of empty seats, too. Um, so and I don't I, think that'll change throughout this season. It's probably only going to get worse as far as. Uh, it won't get any better. You're right. <clears throat> um, uh, but, you know, uh, at the Browns game, the guy behind me was like, well, he's good for about five pass blocks, of, you know, five knockdowns a, a game. And he got two, I think, in the Giants game. At least I saw two. I was counting. But then I stopped. I guess I stopped counting after that. I don't know if he didn't have any more. I, didn't, I stopped counting, but didn't see as many. Um, 
trying to remember now the any the he had a big play right another big play to DJ Moore was it a, was it a, was that a longer pass yeah he hit uh, DJ Moore on a longer pass and then I don't remember if it was the next play but I think it was the next play it was either the next play or a couple plays later he hit him on the touchdown yeah um man just uh I don't know you know doesn't seem like there's a lot of players are getting rotated in and, you know, I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, Sha Smith, I know at least had three drops last week. Then he had to have three at least, maybe two, but uh, I swear it was three. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of him either. Uh, it's another one of those picks that every time we pick somebody who's went to South Carolina or North Carolina or, somewhere regional i'm like oh here we go again i had to pick somebody from acc or somebody from the, you know south carolina or clemson or something i, I guess we had not picked a lot of clemson players but, uh mr barnhill the guy used to work with me another teacher at brunswick i uh, used to say he wouldn't root for me because they never picked any nc state players well they picked the nc state player this time and let's talk about him a minute what do you think about oh icky i mean you know there have certainly been growing pains um, I, it was, it was no secret that pass blocking was going to be, um, you know, a learning, a learning process for him. But I think at the end of the day, I feel like at least he has a mixed bag, uh, in what we've seen so far. And when I say that, I mean, he, he's at least flashing that he can play the position well, and that gives me hope that in time he'll get there. Right now, yeah, he's given up, uh, you know, a couple sacks in the Browns game. And I feel like he had at least one in the Giants game. So, you know, there's there's a learning curve, but I feel like he's going to be okay, um, you know, obviously in the long run. And worst case scenario with him is you move him to guard, he's going to be one of the best guards in the league. Yeah, so, he would be a mauling guard. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the way he moves people around in the run game, you're talking – you know, worst case scenario, I guess you're just going to end up flipping him and Christensen. Um, yeah, I hate to see, I hate to see that though. You know, first round pick number six and being a I, guard. I hate that. to see it as well, and I honestly don't think it'll come to that. Yeah. Uh, but I, you know, there's going to be some lumps along the way, especially in his rookie season here. Oh yeah, obviously. You know, like you said, we knew he was a road grader instead of a pass blocker, and or not so much a pass blocker as he was a run blocker, but. Um, you know, week one, you had, you know, who else? What was the worst he could have? You know, what was right. the worst time he could get? And that was about it. You know, somebody uh, like Miles Garrett going against a trash talker like his former teammate, you know, and wanting out for blood, just out for blood. I mean, um, yeah. So, I mean, I know they're friends, but it was, it was, it was tough to watch that game. But I know we keep going back to it. But. Yeah. Well, that was, you know, baptism by fire, to say the least, yeah, uh, right. for for Ikemu Kwanu in that game. Um, and then another guy you just spoke on, uh, Shai Smith. Uh, personally, I like Shai Smith. Um, yeah. But I also felt like the uh, – for whatever reason, the coaching staff was – I don't know if it was the coaching staff or just, you know, the looks they were given. It felt like he was targeted – uh, way too much. I mean, it was he was targeted like he was prime Julio Jones out there, and yeah. I don't I don't know if that was by design or what, but it seemed very odd for a guy who was clearly struggling, uh, even from the beginning of the game in what was basically his second NFL game. Yeah, uh, clearly, you know, from early in the first quarter, you could tell he was a little off. Uh, he had a you know a drop, and then soon after he had another drop. And you know, I yeah, that's fine for a young player. That that's part of learning the game, and it takes time. But what I didn't understand is why they just kept going back to him and back to him and back yeah. to him. And yeah. I get that you don't shy away from him. No pun intended. You don't yeah. shy away from him, uh, and you know, hurt his confidence even more. But at the same time, it felt like they were force feeding him the ball to try to you know get him out of his funk instead of just letting the game come to him. Right. Um, I think in time he'll be fine. I still think he's going to be a good player. Um, but I I did see a lot of Panthers fans that were real frustrated with him. Um, and I think, you know, it's not 
I guess my message to Panthers fans is don't give up on Shai Smith yet. Um, right. But when the time comes, I'll let you know. Yeah. Um, another stat that just popped in my head while I was, uh, you were talking was I think I remember seeing something about uh, average time before Baker Mayfield was getting rid of the ball. It was like 1.11 seconds or something. Did you see that stat too? Yeah, I did. And uh, I don't remember if it was like if it was last in the NFL, but it was really close to it. Yeah. He's getting uh, less time to throw than just about every other quarterback in the NFL, which is a terrible combination when you think about the fact that most of his passes are getting batted down and he's trying to roll out of the pocket when he doesn't need to. Um, he's made a bad habit of that this year also. Forgot to bring that up before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know the scary thing to me to me about that is, Paul, he – Compared to last year, it feels like he's he's had like an eternity in the pocket. That that's the sad part, yeah. in my opinion, about our yeah. offensive line right now. Is it still feels way better than it was last year to me? I agree with you. I really do. I, you know, I'm, I find Which myself is, yelling, Baker, throw it, throw it, throw it. You're holding on too too long. But it, you know, it seems like he's not. You know, he's got it for eternity to do it. Yeah. So it's a lot different than last year. I agree with you. Yeah, isn't that – I mean, that's just crazy because it's like on that stat alone, you know they've been piss poor and they've still been greatly better than last year, in my opinion. Let's – You know, we're, we're sitting here complaining a lot about it, David. You know, they 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 had a chance to win both the games they were in. We, we could be 2-0 and right now and we we wouldn't be complaining. You know, uh, we'd be talking about how we were going to beat the Saints or whatever, you know, and – um. I think Kamar may be hurt, so you know, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I think you were about to say something. So no, go ahead. Uh, that was, you know, I was actually about to bring up the Saints, so you uh, segued us perfectly into the next topic. Uh, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. That's kind of the the crazy thing about all of this is we could just as easily be two and zero. Uh, you know, with that being said, it kind of brings us back to the whole coaching conversation because the Panthers have been so bad in these close games. Uh, and they haven't been making the plays when they need to at the end of games, which is, you know, kind of the same conversation that leads us from 2-0 to 0-2. Yeah. Um, but, man, you know, I got a feeling about this game, and I think the Panthers might win this game. Uh, the Saints' defense has been outstanding this year. Uh, but here, if you look right here, they got five, four guys listed as questionable. Two of them are, are defensive players. One of them is Alvin Kamara. Jameis Winston's playing hurt, plus he's Jameis Winston, who yeah. always seems to throw us three interceptions in a game, which, by the way, is another thing we could bring up. The Panthers are the only team in the NFL without a takeaway, which seems insane if you think yeah. about some of the guys in their secondary. Crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. It's It's been a rough two weeks for the Panthers. For whatever reason, I feel like they're going to have a real shot in this game. Um, I guess just because I've watched the NFL long enough to know that whenever someone's counted out by everybody, there's a good chance they're going to surprise everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, we, you look back to last year, we played the Saints early in the season and what we beat the dog snot out of what was like 26 to 7 or something just dominate them from the first snap of the game. I think Winston threw, you know, two interceptions in that game. Yeah, it's similar, similar scenario, playing them at home, um, just like we did this time last year. I, I'm not saying I think the Panthers are going to win, but I'm saying don't be surprised if the Panthers win. No, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, uh, as a Panthers fan, they, you know, one of the things you can expect is they will play to the level of the competition. They will, uh, the you know. Here's a couple of rules for you as a Panthers fan. Those are those of you who are out there listening who are new to the games. <laughs> here's how it goes. <laughs> yeah, Panthers, yeah. If, if they are expected to win, if everybody picks the Panthers to win the game, they will not win the game. If nobody expects the Panthers to win the game, there's a chance they may win the game. So watch. Um, if there's someone who used to play for the Panthers, they will have an outstanding game against the Panthers. <laughs> If the uh, somebody who the Panthers have who's playing against their old team sometimes does well, 
Sam Darnold sometimes does gets close, um, i.e. Uh, Baker Mayfield, you know, and sometimes it doesn't matter, you know, uh, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. So there's there's some rules for you to, to live by as a Panthers fan. Those things you can't expect. Yeah, man, absolute absolute facts from a from a Panthers fan OG over here. <laughs> All right, let's try to uh, go ahead and wrap this up here. We'll go uh, score predictions for this game, uh, and maybe some final thoughts heading into Week Three. All right, you gonna let me go first, there, host? Absolutely, sir. All right, score prediction. I'm gonna say. Tight game. Uh, Jameis has a couple passing touchdowns, a fumble, and an interception. And we almost win, but they kick a field goal at the end and win. And the score will be 24 to 21. Wow. That would be absolutely on par for the way the season's gone. That would be three games in a row where the Panthers lose on a field goal at the end. Um, all right. Man, I feel compelled to uh, to uh, pick the Panthers to win just because at some point they have to win, and this is a Panthers podcast. So I'm going to say um, – I'll say 27-24. Panthers pull it out. Now, I say that, but honestly, I don't really believe it. But that's what I'm going to go with. 27-24. Something to keep an eye on in this game. Jameis Winston is playing very hurt right now. I think I heard he had like three bruised ribs or three cracked ribs or something like that. Oh, my. So, he could be one one uh, Brian Burns uh, hit from, from not finishing this game. So, that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I'm also going to predict that he turns the ball over three times or the Saints turn the ball over three times. Panthers have zero takeaways going into week three. The only team in the NFL without a takeaway. I'm going to give a bold prediction of three takeaways in this game. Um, what's funny about me saying all this is in my heart of hearts, I expect us to lose. And... Well, that's what I say that. <laughs> but you know, but my, I'm going to keep my... it optimistic here. Uh, at the primetime Carolina Panthers podcast. And I'm going to say three turnovers and a 27-24 win for the Panthers. You got it, man. You got it. You got it. You're optimistic, man, over there. I'm the guy who says what I think might happen. It hey. doesn't happen, you know? I'm, I'm as pessimistic as they get. So whenever we get on here and, and do this uh, this show, I try to, to, to uh, change my ways and be an optimistic host uh for the Panthers fans out there but uh this is the last game though I've been optimistic over these uh these other two games not not this one all right you lose this one I'm going to start predicting losses for 14 more weeks I hear you here's here's my final thought for you I say we suck it for Sean Payton we suck, suck it for Payton. suck it for Payton suck it <laughs> suck for it Sean. for Sean <laughs> Yeah, Look just don't up. just don't type that into your search engine, and uh, you'll no, be good. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, Google. <laughs> did you mean no? Um, <laughs> you know, let's sandbag for Sean Payton. There we go. How about that? Sandbag, sandbag for Sean. Sean. So and that's your guy, huh? That's my guy. I think. Hey, it, it, Tepper's got the wallet, and I, I think the Cowboys are going to surprise some people with with this Cooper Rush kid, and and they're not going to be they're not going to fire McCarthy after winning some games and. And I think we're going to be in. We're going to go scoop Sean Payton up. If not, um, you know, like I said, an assistant. But sandbag for Sean is who I'm looking for. I used to, and I hate Sean Payton, man. I hate him, but I would be his biggest fan if he became. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll turn that into a hashtag for you. Sandbag for Sean. Sandbag um, for Sean. Yeah, the Cowboys are the only real obstacle I see in that scenario. Definitely, um, because I know the Cowboys and the Panthers were kind of the two names that arose uh, as soon as him and the Saints parted way. But also, I know he's uh, under contract with the Saints still, so I don't know exactly how that'll work. Um, I think that's the reason he sat out this year is because he only had one more year on the deal. That I don't know. It. Sorry, go ahead. That was it. That's why he's sitting out this okay. year. Okay, cool. So, 
Yeah, I mean, if, if the really if, year, you know, if the Cowboys don't go trying to sign him, um, you know, I think he'll definitely sign with the Cowboys if that happens. But if, if it's just the Panthers and you know the the pack, I think the Panthers have a good shot. Yeah, I do too. All right, cool. Well, um, Mr. Paul Mills, thank you for joining me, sir. Uh, hey, it's been great. A uh, a wise man who once upon a time done teached me English and uh, great guy. I appreciate it, Dave. It's always a pleasure, man. Good seeing you at the game the other day. I'll, I'll be at the Atlanta game and the Tampa Bay game. I don't know if you'll be either one of those, but look for me if you are. Yeah, I'll try to get out there. And if I if I'm out there, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely hit you up, man. All right, man. We'll see you. All right. See you. Peace out, right. everybody. Keep pounding.